Hey, girl. Hi. Hi. How are you, yes, babe? Yes. How are you? I'm good today. Pretty good, right? I'm it's a nice, nice day. Weather's pretty okay today. It's, it's not super like intensely burn your face off hot well, today. You know, which is you're nice. getting ready to get some thunder boomers down there, right? I know. I'm stocking up for supplies. I mean, I don't think it's actually supposed to hit Miami. I know, but it, that doesn't stop me from going to Total Wine. Oh, so okay. Let me have my truth. That kind of. I, I was thinking like water. No and hurricane axe. party supplies. Okay, hurricane party okay, supplies. Okay. Even it's, if it doesn't come here, I get hurricane party supplies. Okay, I don't blame you. Like we're gonna get tropical storm, and that's just not fun because it's just raining outside. You can yeah. go outside; it's just a lot of rain. But you know, as every North Carolinian always says, we need the rain. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that girl at the re- at the Renaissance show said. She was from Jacksonville, and she was she was like, "Oh, how's your summer been down here?" I'm like, "It's raining every day." She's like, "Oh, I wish I would send it up there because we need the rain." We and I was like, rain. "Lord, we always need the rain, girl. We always." I just was like, "I'm sorry, honey." Speaking of um of North Carolina, I was reading a wonderful uh story. Obviously, this is more South Carolina about this lady fighting the HOA in Lake Wiley. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> it was just, like it was a story. I was like, girl, she was basically like they approved her windows and then they uh, unapproved her windows after she already got her windows installed. And now they wanted to put a lead on her house. I was like, girl, she better have like, the- you're already at Lake Wiley, honey. Sell that thing. Go out in the middle of nowhere. She better have that document saying that they approved it. Mm-hmm. No, she did. Okay, and the then. court was like the court was literally like, uh, what do y'all do? <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I'm telling you right now. If I was, I'm, I would call her on the phone. And be like, girl, you could sell that condo and go out in the middle of nowhere, get yourself a nice double wide beef, and ain't nobody gonna bother you. I was talking to somebody I know who's on HOA board, and um, in their HOA board, it it, it was four gay people, oh, and I was like, awful. so I came up with a joke. <laughs> what do you get when you get a Leatherman, coked out bear, drag queen and tweak together at what? HOA board. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what they are anyway. And I so mean, he was honestly. like, Oh my god, I should have like a like a online show with a Zoom call with all those in it and tell some of the stories that we that happened. Apparently in his HOA somebody was um uh decomposing a horse outside. Say what? They, they were a vet student, so they had a horse carcass, so they were decomposing it. Wouldn't that smell? Yeah, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Some, somebody just, somebody installed a full-size, on a tiny little patio, a full-sized uh, uh, jacuzzi with without mm-hmm. permission. Nobody's got to keep North Carolinians from a jacuzzi. <laughs> no Isn't one. Isn't that right? Girl, I, no one. Do, do you like a jacuzzi? I mean, you know, if I want to get a staph infection, yes. <laughs> that's, that's the one. That's the one. If someone said, wait, hey, I don't have anything to do this weekend. I'm like, you know what? I got an idea for you. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> don't knock it till you try it. Let's get soaking wet. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> Oh, God. So yeah, so I mean, I, I you know, I, sh- shout out to anybody with a hot tub. I'm sure you don't all have staph infections. So I played that song for my husband. <laughs> oh no! Why did you do that? And I was like, <laughs> I just have to play the beginning of the song for you, and then you have to wait. I was like, hold on, let me get to where she speaks. Fast forward thirty seconds. Fast forward thirty seconds. Fast forward. Okay, she's getting ready to speak. Fast forward thirty seconds, and then it goes into, "Hello, I'm gonna meet you." And we're all going to go down the pool. And then, uh, are you ready to go down that pool? You ready to go down the pool? Let's get soaking wet. And he's like, this is, this is, this is fantastic. I'm like, you are a liar. <laughs> it just had to be there. Right? A bunch of coked up, methed out homosexuals. Nobody's paying attention to anything that's happening except for those, those like four words. Uh, you know. I would have loved to have been at like Parliament House during that with the pool because I'm sure they all were like, "Oh my god, oh my god, we're down the 
Girl, Apple. can you imagine? I can. <laughs> Those poor lifeguards, and by lifeguards, I just mean the people that were sober. <laughs> the drag queens. <laughs> they weren't sober. <laughs> At the bar. <laughs> they had to drink to keep themselves from getting a staph I infection. I know, I know, I know. Oh, God, girl. So what else is going on with you? Did you, did you have fun at your lip sync showdown? Uh, yeah, no, it was great. I mean, I didn't win, but my, but like one of my like black market kids won. Good. Um, we ended up having to do a three way battle because one of the person that he was going to battle didn't was uh sick or something like that. So, uh, it was nice. And, uh, yesterday was cool. We had our, our eighth anniversary at the uh, improv theater. Oh, so that was, was, was that super on nice. calendar? I wasn't in the show. Oh, okay. Then it was shit. Oh, I haven't been there for like a month because of like COVID and Arizona and all that stuff. So I wasn't even expecting to be in the show. Girl, I haven't that been sound to like a city in Arizona? COVID Arizona. COVID Arizona. <laughs> it does. Right next to Yuma. Yeah, exactly. See, where are you from? COVID Arizona. COVID. COVID. I oh, but hate. my mom, my mom is fancy. So she calls it COVID. COVID. COVID Arizona. Covered Arizona. Covered mm-hmm. Arizona. Oh my! It was founded. It was founded by some people that were trying to escape the persecution of injections. Girl, <laughs> speaking of lies and deceit, did you know that we have a Patreon? Say what, dear <laughs> listeners? If you go to Patreon.com, woo woo, Mims and Mame, you can throw us some money. Hey, Mame. Yes. Did you know that we have another podcasts? <laughs> That's what? right. We have You Slay Me, our Murder She Wrote podcast, and We Object, our Allie Big Bill podcast, which we really need to record this next week. Hey, I'm, pr- I'm totally, I'm, re- I'm ready for it. I'm ready yes. to. I'm ready to. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm rearing and I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. ready. I'm, I'm ready. ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Hey, Mame. <laughs> yes. Did you know? Did you know that? What am I knowing? Did you know that we have merchandise? That's right. Did you should say what? That's right. If you go to bimsandmame.com, you can buy something. Hey, Mame. Yes. Do you know what I truly love? Five star reviews. That's right, Mame. I love five star reviews. I adore them. J'adore. <laughs> J'adore. J'adore. Just call, call me Charlize Theron. And yes, I see any. I'm, I'm walking. I'm walking with that fragrance out of the water. It's like, girl, you go get stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they this clean is, that water and die on three weeks. This is season four, episode 28. Anthony's graduation. I'm Julia Sugarbaker. have timed this to coincide with like black history month that would have been amazing well girl we would have had to you know actually keep track for a few weeks there it is <laughs> and have to work over christmas in this effort. economy <laughs> effort Mm-mm. no girl you and i are never working over christmas like we we barely work now and then to like to like actually do something over christmas or thanksgiving or your birthday, or my birthday, or that five days I take to go visit you. Oh, yeah. What day is my birthday on this coming the next one? I wonder. Probably that same day in January. It always is. 
Well, it's always, it's whatever, I mean, all I have to do is look at Christmas. Whatever the day of the week Christmas is, that's what my birthday is going to oh, be on. Okay. It's It always coincides. Um, no, it's going to be actually, uh, oh, it's a weekday birthday. Like beginning of the week, end of the week, middle of the week? Middle. Oh, wait, hold on. No, no, actually, it's Monday. Oh, that's good. That's good. Be Monday, oh, sure. girl, the... I wonder if it's going to time with the actual day. Yes. This is one of my stars aligning birthdays where it coincides with the actual Martin Luther King Jr. birthday. Girl, you just told everybody when your birthday is, you better not be really giving out that data, that data so they can start finding you. Ain't nobody want right. to find you. So nobody we're sugar bakers. Ain't nobody going to find me. Mm, they don't care that, uh, that my exist. ass is gay. Ain't <laughs> I could keep going. I'm gonna stop so we can get on with Epps. I mean, <laughs> it, we got we got another 40 minutes, so it could be oh, all. The, it could be you singing for like. We could do eight. I could do it. I could do the ain't nobody remix for the next 35 minutes, and then we you do could, five minutes talking about just, that graduation. You know what? I could just turn off this mic. I could put down my headphones. You could just do it. I will publish it. <laughs> <laughs> ain't nobody want to hear it, but I will publish it. I, I, I ain't gonna 40 say plus. That. <laughs> 40 plus year old drag queen freestyles for 35 minutes. Oh, Lord. That's going to be like that girl that fell asleep during COVID and all those people tuned in to watch her when she did her drag show. What? I don't know about this. What do you, what do you mean you don't know about this? I don't know about this. You remember when everybody was doing digital drag shows, right? Yes, I do. I do. I do. So this drag queen was doing a live stream and in the middle of her live stream, she kind of sat down for a minute and she kind of just not on the live stream and people got, it went viral while she was asleep and by the end of it there were over 200,000 people that had tuned in to look at this drag queen sleeping it was wild people been wondering what pork chops been doing for <laughs> anyway girl we're at sugar bakers we're at sugar bakers and Anthony's going to be late this time. Charlene, Mary Jo, they're both here, but Anthony's going to be late. Whoa. What's going on, Anthony? He, he's got to work on his speech because he's a commencement speaker. Oh, wow. And Julia is getting a little verklempt. And Charlene keeps talking about it. And Julia's like, stop talking, stop talking, stop talking, stop talking, stop talking. I mean, it's a very emotional for all of us. I'm sure. Um, <laughs> I, I'm i so proud of Linda Bloodworth Thompson to show the first black person graduating college on her show. Thanks, Linda. Thank you. He hasn't, Thank you, Linda. He hasn't even made a woman pregnant yet. I know. Not for Linda's, lack of her trying. Linda is like the Norman Lear of ladies television right now. Breaking all of those grounds. I'm ladies television. Girl, I would do you remember 30 something? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's some that's some white people nonsense right there, too. I remember when I was in my 30s and then I realized that I was the same age as the people from 30 something, and I was like, oh Jesus, no. Did you watch the show? I remember watching it a little bit when I was like younger, just because it was you know, remember my, my family. Yeah, it was on, right? Yeah, it was just very much like our lives are awful all the time because we're in our thirties and we're gonna have affairs and we're gonna make a lot of mistakes, all because we're in our thirties. Was there a black person on that show? No, mm -hmm. no, that was that was. Remember, it was still the nineties, <laughs> so we hadn't gotten to the required black person on every show. So Charlene. Uh, Mary Jo's on the phone with somebody, and Charlene mm -hmm. cuts in to with an emergency cut for uh, to get Ron DeFay off the phone. And Mary Jo really just hates Ron DeFay's accent. I mean, she'd probably hate yours too, based off of Ron DeFay. They weren't that different. They weren't that different. I was actually noticing that. Oh, I was like, I, that oh, you mean you mean my fake accent or this one? Like my no, talking like accent. You're, no, like when like you get this like one, really like this one, real. this one you mm -hmm. talk about, this right here. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Mary Jo would probably not like that one either. 
well, you know what? She she just needs to go find some rich men north of Richmond or whatever the hell the name of that song is. Oh my gosh. So but spoiler alert with that, by the way, that guy just went like online yesterday because he was so mad that they played his song the Republican um, primary thing. Yeah. And he said, I literally wrote that speech about you people. Yeah, and however, then, but, but, but. But, there's a but. Oh, another but. plot twist. Well, have you listened to the lyrics of the song? Absolutely not. Um, Why are they, like, giving out handouts and da-da-da-da-da? So it, it sounds very anti-Democrat. Like, it's really? written anti-Democrat. It is a... <sighs> Oh, wait, is this one of those ones where they're blaming poor people for being poor, basically? Yeah. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Understood. Understood. Or it was supposed to be satire, but very bad satire. Gross. Because you know that Republicans and, like, well, you know, nobody gets bad satire because you know what it is? It's bad, girl. It's bad. <laughs> Regardless of political party. <laughs> So Vanessa's here, mm -hmm. and Vanessa got Anthony a present. Oh. They all say it's gorgeous. We don't see what the fuck it is. No, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. I think it's some kind of. I have I, the way the package is. It looks like it's probably like a suit jacket of some kind, mm -hmm. like some sort of blazer or something. I, think. I just, I just think it's the pimp outfit from Mama Get You Sucker, <laughs> with with the goldfish in the heel. I need to go back and watch that again. Also, Vanessa looked great. She did. She did. She did. She's yeah. like the little fashion plate of the season now. That that's listed online as black exploitation, but I think that is technically black exploitation satire. It is. Yeah, it lives in that interstitial space. I think the problem with that movie is that it stars the almost one. all. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, uh, when talking about like categorizing it, is that it literally stars all of the stars of the original seventies black exploitation yeah, movies. Yeah, 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 yeah. So people are like, oh, you know, like that's not that's satire. Everybody, once again, people don't get satire. Well, somebody ate Suzanne's rice cakes, and she is not happy about it. I love this speech so. <laughs> Well, Charlene did it, and she just goes off about how they can all eat this, 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 and a whole rack of beef, and she's stuck eating just some fucking rice cakes. What did she say? Glu glued together. Yeah, it was so yeah, it was a it weird was way that she said it. Like Asian, <laughs> it's like Asian spit or something. Yeah, it was so yeah, weird. Yeah. I was like, what? Also, uh, little bit, little bit racist. Just a little Oops. bit, a little bit. I don't think she said Asian. Uh, did she say Asian? I think she. I think she did. Um, I mean, I have. I have to go back and rewatch it. I think she did. Julia, Julia, is like. I think your blood sugar's low. You need to suck on a breath mint. Drink a juice, Shelby. Drink and a juice. Basically, Suzanne says to suck it. Like she, she just, yeah. Well, they all bought Anthony a computer. Mm -hmm. the, the the three of them, Mary Jo, Charlene, and uh, Julia. And that would have been like a Hewlett Packard in 1990, probably. A Hewlett Packard or Tandy could have been a Tandy. Yeah, especially in the South. Or 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 a a, a, a CompuServe or a um, CompuServe one could have been an IBM too. I wouldn't have gotten an IBM. I don't know. Probably a Tandy. They probably went to the Radio Shack. Yes. Commodore. Commodore was still a computer brand at the time. Yeah. Oh, my first computer. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Yeah. I had a Commodore Those 64. Those were the days. Uh, God, we were nerds even back then. Yeah. I didn't ever do anything with it. I I put in like some like some codes and some did some things with oh, it. Oh yeah, like... I, I I changed the color of the screen. <laughs> I just think when I think about it now, <laughs> it's amazing to me because basically, parents bought their kids these computers in like the mid '80s, and essentially just said, "Now do something with it." And you're like, I don't know what to do with yeah. it either. Yeah, I'm a child. What yeah. Are you yeah, 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 about? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, at least at least they bought my father 
God. So, okay, it was he bought it for his failed business, and then he brought it home, and at least it had Dig Dug. So I played Dig Dug on the Commodore 64. Dig Dug is such a good game. It is. It is. Dig Dug 2, not so much. You know, my favorite game of that era was Burger Town. That was the one that a I loved. Burger Town is Burger Time. Is it the Burger Time? Is it the one where you run across the burgers and have it yes. drop? Yeah. I yeah. love that game. I so love. So back in my, with my Atari, there was one that was this penguin it was called Pogo or Pongo or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. And you push the ice. That yes. was my game. I love that game. I could play that thing for hours. Actually, I mean, I've been in the, like interested like lately. A lot of these game companies are starting to do like these crazy retro mm -hmm. style games where it's kind of like these old games, which I mean, they're actually mm -hmm. quite yeah. fun, I think. Yeah. Pogo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Those were the days. So Suzanne's dumb thinks it's dumb to get a, a computer because it could just get a virus. Not a virus. And Charlie's like, you know, if it got a virus, give it to our other office equipment. Mm -hmm. well, Technically, yes, if they're connected to it. Well, not at the time, girl. Not that 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 was not in the Lord's year of nineteen hundred ninety. <laughs> and it, how would it even get a virus? Is the question because it wouldn't have been attached to the internet, like. I know. I mean, like, what are they going to do? Get it from a BPS board, which they don't know what that is. That, well, it, <laughs> at would, that point. it would be it would be like if somebody downloaded something onto a disc and yep. you put this disc in or if somebody did some espionage. Yep. And like, God, girl. So last night, my husband and I watched a movie that I had never seen before. OK. 2004's Collateral. Jamie Foxx and uh, 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 Tom Cruise. Jamie Foxx is the cab driver. I never saw that movie. Oh, it's good. It's 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 so it's it's a Tom Cruise action movie. But is it? It's a good Tom Cruise. Action it's a good movie. Tom Cruise action movie. Yeah. Okay, all it's, right. It's all well and good except for the very last scene. Like it. it is Tom Cruise calling the N word? That's what happens. I love I, you, man. And he's like, no. I that would have been better than the scene that happened. I would have loved it. Like, I love you, man. And Jamie Foxx is like. No. <laughs> I'm going to go right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, yeah, it's 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 a fun movie. It's it's a it's a very, very fun movie. I, I, I suggest it. Where what was I go? Where did this start from? What, what started me down this track? 2000 oh the the computer virus well there's one scene in there that he has to get some data from a computer and mm. girl if they did not have the world's biggest thumb drive <laughs> i love a fat thumb drive <laughs> like and you know it just had like one word document on it nothing else <laughs> <laughs> Five megabyte storage. Yeah, and like it loaded it that that thumb drive loaded in like ten seconds. I'm like, this is not, my dear friends, this is not a thumb drive from the Lord's year of 2004. Not only did it work the first time you plugged it in, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about those back then. Have to pull it out, put it back in, turn it around, put it back in. That's yeah. right. It was almost like bingo, right? You were like, yes. is it going to work this time? Uh -huh. Is it going to work this time? Got to jimmy it a little, see if it... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, technology. Holy crap. To all, my, to all of our Gen Z dear listeners, if we have any, you don't know how good you have it. <laughs> Although, they didn't get floppy disks that you could fan yourself with, so, you know, it looks like that. We weren't supposed to do that. <laughs> We live in the South. It was hot. Where in the world's Carmen San Diego? Find disc four. <laughs> Shit, we don't have disc four. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dad, did you throw away the disc? <laughs> I remember those arguments. Uh -huh, like, uh -huh. Did you clean this room? Why did you clean this area? I had a system. I'd... 
Yeah. I luckily never, my first home computer was an IBM Aptiva, mm -hmm. which was supposed to be, you know, very far advanced and understand your voice. It didn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was supposed to do <laughs> transcript with the, the shitty little mic it came with. It couldn't. <laughs> I think my first like my first real like post Commodore computer there was a, a deacon at our church that was like an another nerd and he built computers okay so like so that was like my, my first so when people were talking about computers at school a lot of times I was like I don't I don't know what I have <laughs> my, my friend our, our mutual friend of ours um they had a computer from a computer company in Statesville, yes. SCRC. Oh yeah, and I, I remember was, that. And I was like, "What? What is like?" They would turn on this computer, and it wouldn't go very well. I'd be I ebbing them like at night, and they would be like, "I'm I'm sorry, it's having a moment." It's like, "What? What kind of computer? It's an SCRC. What does that even mean? What does that? Is it a warranty? I don't know. What is it?" God. I'm not sure. None of these things, none of the questions you're asking me right now make any sense. Oh, God. SCRC. Oh, boy. Well, so Vanessa leaves and Julia says that she needs a new lock to prevent people from coming in. And Suzanne's like, you don't need new lock. You just need the 357 Magnum. That'll scare them if that they know that it's in the house. That's exactly right. Do you own a gun? Um, I don't. My husband does. Really? Hmm? I, really? Yes. Like a handgun? Yeah. Or like a shot? Like really? A hmm? God, he really was straight for too long. I mean, you know, and we grew up in the South, so, you know. So did we. Um, th does he ever go and shoot it? He's only done that a couple of times. Okay. Okay. Um, he hasn't since we moved into this house, but he used to at the, at the old place with his old roommate. Okay. Okay. Have you yeah. ever shot a gun? I used to be really good at shooting rifles. Oh, girl, you should go to college for that. Yeah, I was actually very good at. I was very good at skeet shooting when I was younger. Um, my dad used to take me all the time, and that was like the one bonding activity mm. we had. Because I don't know if you know this, rifling and at university is a full scholarship. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. I don't think I would have stayed good at it, though, because this was also when I was maybe like 12-ish, okay. 13-ish, before my eyes got really bad. Oh, yeah. You know, your, my, eye, your eyes did go, didn't they? Like, my distance eyes are terrible, yeah. so... Yeah, that would probably wouldn't have worked. It would have been like, I want that scholarship. But oh, you, know you know shot what, girl? These people. You know what? With my naked eye, I saw all the falling <laughs> rain coming down on me. I was in the Asian market today, and they were playing the Gin Blossoms, and I was like, "What a strange time!" That is such. The, I love the Gin Blossoms. They hold no, up. No, I did. I did too, but it was just so weird. Like me in my forties at the Asian market and just the gin blossom playing. I was this is all it's like a I'm in like a weird movie from like it's like nineteen ninety eight, nineteen ninety seven right now. Well it's a little bit later and Anthony's here. And he Yay, got, finally. He got a letter from his grandmother mm -hmm. because she doesn't call because she doesn't like to spend Long distance, dear listeners, back in the day, it used to cost extra for long distance. You call collect, which means the other person paid for it. And but what you would do, do is if, if you had if you had to make a call and you had to do a collect call, what they did was they recorded your name and you could just leave them a message in the name. This is a collect call from, hey, I'll be there in 20 minutes. <laughs> like you ain't ever done that. Hey, I'm getting oh. gas. I'll be there soon. I forgot about those hacks, those life hacks. <laughs> used to go to a payphone. Dear listeners, they used to have payphones, which would be on the street at every gas station. And you would go and you dial zero. I'd like collect call, tell, type in the number, and do that. Yep. Yeah. It was basically like a way of doing paging without paging. Yep, 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 yep. 
And then they, like, you just hope they'd get the thing. Well, you would hear them on the other line. Like, you would hear the other person. You'd hear them say, hello? Yeah. I'll be there. <laughs> You have a you clean call. call from. I'll be there 20 minutes. I've got to get some gas real fast. <laughs> well, I mean, you remember long distance used to literally just be like, it could be just a few miles yeah. from where, we, where we're from. Like, yeah. Do you accept the charges? No. <laughs> I mean, like, where is it? it was, remember when you had to dial... Um, hickory for your america online your mama gets so mad yep. because yep. yep it's like you gotta get off that day yep 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 did they finally put one in statesville yeah. god yeah that that was insane god america online <laughs> well she's driving down with, with her with his uncle and her his aunt yes clavon i believe his name is the uncle I don't remember. Okay. They were some ridiculous southern names. Well, Louise was the aunt's name. <laughs> what those ridiculous southern names. Like I said. <laughs> well, Anthony's beyond nervous. He still has to write his speech. He's afraid he's going to laugh. Um, And Suzanne's basically like, hey, good Lord, why'd they even pick you? And he's like, well, you know, I was picked because I represent, like, the black people of the school, 20% of the school. Um, and he's he's incredibly nervous still because he saw the speech finish writing. He's the chairman of the African-American uh, reading room that's trapped in the library. And he's got to finish his studying for his geography final, which is not going to happen. No. Now, I did... I did have a question about this. Why are they having a geography final the night of, com like, within two days of commencement? That does not happen. Mm, maybe because it's like, a, I don't know, maybe it's a community college thing. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. I, as, as someone who's attended community college. Yeah. It's How, just, it's it's just, just like college. Plot. Yeah. It's okay. just like, like I don't know. Like, yeah. you, you, you have a week before, like, they have to have all their grades in before they do that. Oh, did you see that terrible story about that poor woman that got a, a message about like 17 years later, the school reached out to her to say he didn't actually graduate high school because she was half a credit shy. Girl, don't say that. That's a dream I have sometimes. I didn't actually graduate college. <laughs> yeah, I, I have that and I have to go and find my every once in a while look at my degree and be like, OK, it's right here. I do definitely have a degree in chemistry. <laughs> so. So, okay, now you're going to think this is wild, uh -huh. but that basically happened to me. That you didn't have a degree? I found out the week before graduation uh -huh. that they had calculated my credits wrong and that I was a credit shy from graduating. And you just took credit? I mean, Over the summer. no. Oh. Well, yeah, but I had to take credit during the summer, but like they literally told me the week of graduation. Yeah. And you so, probably walked without diploma in your thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But that was not great for my parents. <laughs> they were like, there was some crying. There's mom's freaking out. She's like, what does all this mean? Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, it was not pleasant. All because a teacher did not submit something correctly. Mm. <laughs> UNC Greensboro. Everybody. Stop it. <laughs> They've gotten better, apparently, I've heard. Uh, so it's it's a little bit later it's a little bit later on and the ladies mm -hmm. are just sitting around talking and Suzanne's basically like he should be worried he's falling the fuck apart right um, and Julia's like well it's related it's all related because his grandmother's the most important person to him mm -hmm. and like she says she's going to help him write the speech he shows up and he she's like what time's your geography test 6 30 what time will the test be over 6 35 great i'll meet you at 7 45 and joy and suzanne's like joy is perfect for this she's got all of harry belafonte's records Charlene, Mary Jo, and Julia decide to give money to the African-American reading room at the library. Yep. 
Suzanne isn't because why do black people need to read in a separate area? And she knows she learned about a lot of famous black people like Amos and Andy. Mm. That one hurt. I I thought it would. Well, yes. (laughs) Like when she said, I was like, Oh no. Uh So dear listeners, if you don't understand the reference for that uh, joke, Amos and Andy started as two white men that did a radio show as two black men, uh, basically parroting all things black culture and, you know, uh, essentially making fun of everything. Uh, But then, strangely enough, it got turned into an actual TV show starring actual black actors that technically just kept doing the same thing, (laughs) even though. You know, because the, all the writers and everybody was was white. It was this two mm-hmm. two black actors that just took advantage of the fact that, you know, they could get paid well doing these characters. So uh, it, it doesn't matter if it's the radio version that was awful or the TV version. They're both awful. Culturally. Which well, is Bernice why is... Julia. I was Go gonna say, which is why Julia gave that extra ten dollars because of Suzanne's remark. Well, Bernice is here. Finally. She says, I love you, Anthony. You are like an illegitimate son to me, which is great. However, this clip was ruined in the Anthony section of the clip show in the previous episode because we saw that before this. So it kind of like, well, damn. I'm still wondering about the order of these things, honestly, like a repackaging. It got repackaged in a weird way. Well, Bernice gave Anthony a Jeopardy game. And I will say, Mame, if you look online, the episode list has uh, the clip show before this. So there's that. Yeah. That's so weird. Yeah. And she was going to get him a cheese tray or the uh, earwax removal system. But Anthony thinks she made the best choice. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I love the murine quality. So Anthony heads out and we find out that Anthony calls his grandmother Dodie. Dondi, 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 not Dodie, Dondi. Dodie was Dodie was his I was getting ready to say, but Dondi. Dondi. And they're like, why does she call him Dondi? And Charlie's like, well, you know, we got back at Poplar Bluff, we got a deacon. And a scooter and a booger and a, she didn't go into June bug or I had a June bug in my I, family. Every every everybody's got a June bug somewhere in their family in the south. I remember across the street from my house, our next door neighbors, one of the kids was called Stanka. Um, one of the kids was called Pumpkin. And, and one of the kids was called Moochie. <laughs> did, you, did you have a Ray Ray in your family? Did I have a Ray Ray in my family? Uh-huh. No. Okay. No. We didn't, have any, we didn't actually have that many nicknames in my family. Um, now, I, yeah. S- some of the names that I was related to sounded like nicknames. Like, I, one of my aunts was Aoni. Aoni. Oh, no. It's a drag queen. That name. sounds like an elegant Southern woman to me. Aoni? Yeah. 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 You and know, you, like that's that kind where you go to her house and there's doilies everywhere. Then there was Eula Jean. <gasps> yeah. We got to bring that name back. The Eula Jean. Yeah. Eula Jean or Eula <laughs> or Beulah. Uh-huh. We got to bring them. Those names need to come back. Do they? Yeah, they do. I went to church with a lady, a lady named Beulah. Beulah. She was, she was exact, exactly what you think I, she would be so like. So I am picturing a woman who would shop at Catherine's. Hmm. Uh, who really liked to wear light blue. She she would wear a dress with the little coat over it in the matching blue. 
a large blue crown with the tool wrapped around and a little over her. She didn't wear hats. That was her only thing. She didn't wear hats. She didn't wear hats. Mm -hmm. She didn't wear hats. Oh, then pin curls. Like old lady. Yeah, 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 yeah. Literally, like, I mean, it was so funny. Like, it's, yeah, she's. And every once in a while, they'd be a little disheveled. Mm -hmm. She had those support, <laughs> so support hose on. Of course. Right. In a in that tone that's two two shades lighter than her actual skin tone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or two shades oh, I darker. The big it was winter or summer. I used to sit every. I used to sit every week between her and my aunt. That's where we sit over. God, the side. I bet you she had the best strawberry candies in her purse. She did. I she figured did. she did. Right beside her snuff. I don't know if that's if that's a black person thing, but uh, all the white women had snuff. A lot. Well, not that many. The lady that used to babysit me, though, she had snuff and she used to let me play with them. I probably had way too much tobacco in my system when I was a child because when she's done with the containers, they're like, can I play with it? So, and I, I love the smell of it. So I was inhaling just yeah. snuff. So it smells like raisins. Dear listeners, if you've never had like tobacco or something and you open up a package, it smells like raisins. It smells very mm -hmm. sweet. It smells good. Like it, it's a nice smell. It's a nice it smell. It really is. Yeah. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Boy, that once again, this is that thing where me and you were talking about like that strange uh, us paralleling in generations, that yeah. strange line. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Before cigarettes bad them, okay? Um, <laughs> So Bernice starts reading answers from Jeopardy. Oh, okay. And Suzanne answers a couple. Charlene answers a couple, and they challenge Mary Jo and Julia to a to a duel. Uh oh. Well, and Mary, they're good. both like, no, no, no. Well, Mary Jo joins in, then Julia joins in. So then it's on. And the one the one that Julia joins in on is what it. Hippophonia is the fear of what? And Suzanne goes, large hips. <laughs> Hippo, it, horses. I said hippos. I think my favorite part of that scene was when Julia answers that one question and she's like, <laughs> like she uh -huh. does that weird thing. I was like, what a weird woman you are. Well, something later on, and the grand total is 2350 for Mary Jo and Julia. And they don't even read the score for, um, yeah. This is probably in the negative. It probably was. <laughs> and the, one of the answers toward the end was about the Grimm brothers, Grimm and Grimm, you know. Um, and Suzanne's like, is Grimm really a famous homophobe? <laughs> and Julie's like homophone, homophone, a word that, you know, means, sounds same, means something different. Uh, Bernice tells Charlene and Suzanne to buck up because this was really embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, Mary Jo, Bernice, and Julia leave, and Suzanne has an idea. She's going to sneak back later on the evening. Okay. When Julia's in bed, steal the book and copy it. Oh, that, and memorize that sounds, all the answers. Does not sound like a good idea, but okay. No, it doesn't. So it's later at night. Suzanne's sneaking in with her with her flashlight. She's got the booklet. Somebody's coming in the door. Oh, it's that burglar they were talking about earlier. It's a burglar. Suzanne pulls out her gun and shoots and shoots Anthony in the leg. He oh. is down on the ground and Suzanne screams, I love you. You can't be dead. Why have they not been started dating? The scandal, dear. The scandal. Scandalo. A scandalo. A scandalo. A, sca a little, a tiny one. Just a tiny a one. Scandalo. <laughs> The itsy bitsy scandal of <laughs> oh god worse than the blue dress ah, so we're at the hospital now yes that's and, how you know it was serious yeah 
Yeah, and Suzanne's like, well, at least you don't have to give the speech. Girl, speaking of that, when you said that, I was I was reminded of um, Boston Legal, I think it was. Okay. Or Boston Public, one of the two. Mm-hmm. Leslie Jordan was a guest star. <laughs> and, like, somebody shoots him. He just, ah, falls to the ground, like, shoots him in the shoulder and falls yeah. to the ground. It's just very hilariously shot. Um, I don't know what made me think about that. Anthony being shot reminded you of Leslie Jordan being shot. I can't imagine what would make you think those two things. Oh, that's right. They're both white. (laughs) Nothing. (laughs) You okay there? You need a moment? Okay. Glad I could help. Okay. You back now, Mame? I think so. Okay, good. I'm proud of you. So so we're at the hospital, and Suzanne's like, you know what the best part of this is? You don't even have to give the speech. And he's like, like, hell, I don't. My doctor's supposed to let me out tomorrow. Tonight, I'm going to go. I'm going to get my ass ready. I'm going to hobble up there, and I'm going to give him my speech. And she's like, Suzanne's like, I feel terrible. Will Gandhi forgive me? He's like, who's Gandhi? Your grandmother. He's like, I don't know, but I'm not going to press charges as long as you play your cards right, Suzanne. So so we're at Sugar Baker's. And Mary Jo's like, I don't understand what she was doing here. What was she doing here that late? Charlene's like, well, she was trying to steal the game to, to you know, copy it so we could, Mary Jo just like, why didn't you just go out and buy one? We are stupid. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's a very simple. Uh-huh. Yeah. You could have just gone to Roses and bought it. I don't, did you ever play the Jeopardy game? I never played the board game. Oh, no, that's not true. We played it in school before. It, it was it was a pain in the ass because it did have that little booklet that was... Yeah. It was very tiny print for all the questions yeah. and answers, yeah. I remember... I mean, I loved it when it became video game form. It was always fun oh, yeah. to do it that yeah. way. But, yeah, no, it was... I can't remember what, what teacher we had. I don't know if you had them, but I remember there was one of our teachers that, that used to be a thing we did I, a lot. I, I have a very important question for you. A very important yeah. question. It's going back yeah. to middle school. Yeah. An assignment that we had multiple times, and I'm wondering if you ever did it. Did you ever read The Red Badge of Courage? Yes. Hmm. It was for AG. I never read it. Because we, mean, weren't, we weren't great in AG, and I was like, this is trash. I mean, I just did, you know me, I just did what they tell me. I know, I know, I know, I know. Here, I've never been a questioner. I know. I was like, this is, this is, I made it like a few pages in. Um, you threw it across the room saying, this is trash. I don't know. I've only ever done that with one book. One what book, book was that? I made it three pages in. Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. Three pages in. And I was like, this book is misogynistic trash. Oh, dear listeners, if you only understood the backstory of this comment, it would take it would take an entire episode to explain. I, so this and it was even in college. It was in college. And it's not. Have you ever seen this book? It's not a thin book. No, it's not. Did you read it? I've ever seen the book. It used to be around the coffee shop constantly. I, did you ever read it, though? No. So I, I was like, OK. I'm I'm in this like intro class at, at Wake Forest and it was like transcendental whatever like they had little intro hippy dippy freshman yep. classes and I was like fine this is the one we're going to read okay I started I was like 3 pages in I was like no no this this is it's misogynistic and like poorly written and I'm like what what? Just give me my Toni Morrison. Here's the thing. If you're going to have something influence your life that much, it better be well, as well written as Toni Morrison. 
I mean, for me, uh, my <laughs> if it for did... me, it had to do with the people who was recommending it to me, and I was like, mm, I don't think that's gonna be good for me. It's oh, you mean the rec- one, the one, the one, because he did it my way. Yeah, just tell. Um... Oh my God, I hit that note better than he did. Um, did actually. <laughs> <laughs> Dear listeners, there's nothing like having to suffer through a four-minute operatic version of My Way every week at karaoke for a year and a half. Every week. Every week. Oh, my there's, fucking There's God. so many other songs out there, you know? Like, so so many songs. Yeah. But... Yeah. Did you know that people get... um. In the Philippines, people get uh, shot for singing that badly. Yes. No, they don't get shot, but it is a... I've heard that it people get actually... I, oh. This is not like if I was reading, like, it's an actual problem there. He probably like physical read it online, violence. and that means it's... Yeah, physical violence, but not shot. Um, I don't know, girl. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not Filipino. <laughs> but my boss is, so I will ask them. Next time I see them, hey, were you ever shot singing my way poorly? And then she's like, no one ever did that. No one ever sang that. So, so Dondi's here. And they, they, they introduce themselves and like, Anthony's not there. They're asking where he is. And Julia's like, hey, do you ever tell you about Suzanne? She's like, is she the one with the pig? Well, the pig the pig ran away, but um, she shot him, and she rightfully so has like a very oh good lord yeah yeah. But you kind of wanted them to stay on that scene a little bit longer. Why because... don't white crumb? Twice, same joke. Oh. Twice. <laughs> Engine and caboose. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So we're at graduation. Yay. Anthony gives his speech. He he thanks his grandmother for dumping out some crayons and explaining that, you know, racism is just about the colors. Um, Not, not. Colors. I said colors. I did not add an ED in there. <laughs> colors. The colors of the Crayola crayons. Just want to be clear because I know that my voice sometimes sounds like I say other words. Do you think that they think that I will let you say something like that and let it slip by? Come on now. It's true. It's true. So he thanks his grandmother, thanks the ladies. And then he's like, and, you know, I most of all want to thank one person, and hopefully soon there will be the Suzanne Sugar Baker Black History Student Reading Room. Do 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 do. Come on. Do 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 do. Hey, Mame. Yeah. Did you find yourself a Miss Georgia Wild? I really loved the white number that Julia had in the second half of the show, the creamy white. The I loved it on her. I you, thought that was like, I mean, I didn't like when she put the jacket on top of it, but I loved it when she was explaining everything to the grandmother. I loved that outfit. You mean you are going to give it to um to to, to Charlene's red dress? That that travesty they put Jane Smart in. It's actually funny because it's so it's weird that you said that. With that doily um, on top. When I was watching this, I actually thought to myself, man, Charlene is in some really crappy clothes this time. Like mm-hmm. this episode, that black and white number earlier. Like I get it. She had a baby, but like, good I, gracious. So I gave it to Anthony because, you know, he graduated and like, I, I Actually, the best dress was probably Suzanne when she's waving at everybody, like for giving the the money. Like she's that little turquoise dress. Did you turquoise. enjoy this episode, Mame? It was silly. Oh, my hot neighbors walking by. 
Hello, hot neighbor. He has got a badonka donk on him, let me tell you. Does he? He does. Like one of those like thick white boy ones or like one of thick those high boy. black boy ones? Thick white boy ones. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yes, and dear listeners, they are two different they are two different types of badonka donks. Mm-hmm. I I'm I am an ass man. Um what? <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> the scat man. Like, I love it so much. And every time I hear it for just a moment, I'm reminded of like simpler times. <laughs> when you, I just thought that was the coolest thing that had ever oh, existed God. in like up until that moment. Like, oh my God, they combine scat and dance music. This is the craziest thing ever. And then when you get a little older, you find out what scat actually means. Um, did you enjoy this episode? Yes. <laughs> I did too, Mame. I did too. <laughs> hey, Mame. I, yeah. Why yeah. don't you Why don't you tell our dear listeners <laughs> what scat actually? <laughs> I'm not doing that. That's not they what it says go, on your they, Tinder profile. Hey, why don't you tell our dear listeners where they can they find can, you? They can go to Urban Dictionaries if they really want to know. Um, hi, dear listeners. Uh, geez, Louise. It's me, Auntie Mayhem, your favorite relation. I can't think straight now with this word having in my brain. Girl, you um, haven't been thinking straight since 20, ever, 30 ever, years, 40 ever. years, 45 years. What year did Victor Victoria come out? That's the start, 1983. That's the start. Oh, it's that young? I thought it was in the 70s movie. Okay. No, no, no. It was in the okay. 80s. Okay. Um, okay. Back to this. So I do listeners, uh, me, Auntie Mame. Yeah, that part. Um, you can find me hosting Amazing Colossal Karaoke every Thursday night at Killy Rido in Miami Beach. Uh, you can find me doing improvised uh, comedy and stand-up at the Villain Theater. More about them at villaintheater.com. And you can hear me commenting on the It's Happening Out talk show. Uh, more about them and It's Happening Out on various social media platforms. And you, Mims. Man, we talked about this. You don't have to list all of them. You can just say, you can find it all. Hey, at- everybody, you can find me all at I'm your com. There we go. Hey, y'all, I'm the Divine Miss Mims. You can find out all about me at com. There we go. See how easy that is? I mean, but that's... I don't know. And, but when you direct is... them, to, they people are more likely to remember one thing than multiples. Not everybody has ADHD like you, girl. Eh. Okay. <laughs> Got a point there. Hey, man. Yeah. Did you know we have Patreon? Oh, That's wow. right. If you go to patreon.com, Mims and Mame, throw us some money. Hey, man. Yes. Did you know that we have another podcast? What? That's right. We have... You slay me. Our murder, she wrote podcast, and we object. Our Alan McBill podcast, hey, Mame. Yes. Did you know that we have merchandise? That's what? right. If you go to mimsamame.com, you can buy something. Hey, Mame. Yes. Do you know what I love? Five star reviews. That's right, dear listeners. I love five star reviews. They really help support us. Hey, Mame. Yeah. Did you know that you can reach out to us? That's right, dear listeners. You can send us an email at mimsamame at gmail.com or send us a text at 704-380-0618. Hey, Mame. Mm-hmm. Mame. Yes. Mame. Yes. Do you have anything else to add? Not really. Then why don't you say goodnight, Mame. Goodnight, Mame. Bye, y'all.